Okay, what we're going to look at now is um, three different types of um, biodiversity, but we're going to be paying particular attention to the first one, which is species diversity. Species diversity is the number of different species and the number of individuals within each species that are in make up a community. This is the one we're going to be spending a bit of time on today uh, in this little video and looking at the equation associated with that. But I'll just talk you through the other two as well. Genetic diversity is um, the variety of alleles possessed by a population or a species. We've already done a little video on um, genetic diversity, so if you're not quite sure about that, please check that out. And then the other type of diversity that you need to be aware of is ecosystem diversity. And that's just the number of different habitats within a particular area. So obviously, the more habitats there are, the larger or the greater the ecosystem diversity. All three of these types of diversity come under this here. A general term used to describe the variety in the living world. So the larger the diversity, the larger the variety. So species diversity then. It's the number of different species and the proportion of the community that is made up of an individual species. So let's consider this woodland here. The way you calculate what species diversity is by counting the number of different species within this ecosystem or this community, this habitat and the number of individuals of each species as well. So here, consider this wheat field and this meadow. Let's say they are exactly the same size. Now what I'm going to say is both could have 25 species of plants. Now that's not too hard to imagine here in the meadow. 25 different species of plants you can see there's a lot of variety in there. That's not too hard to understand or, or, or comprehend. However, in the wheat field, 25 different species is a little bit more difficult to um, appreciate. But it wouldn't be too difficult. Yes, 95% of the field is made up of wheat. But the remaining 5% could be the odd random weed that is in this field. So absolutely both could contain 25 species of plant, but this one, the species are much more evenly distributed compared to this one where it's made up of completely, nearly all, one species. So which one's got the greatest diversity? Well, of course, it's the meadow. This meadow here has got much higher diversity. How do you prove that? Well, you need to use this formula here. And this is the diver species diversity index. So D... Here, that is the diversity index. Now there are no units associated with this. There's no scale that you need to apply it to. It just gives you a number. Now, when you're calculating it, you know it calculates to do that two decimal places, but it gives you unless told otherwise. But on its own, it doesn't really give you much information. It's much better when you use to compare it um, to another diversity index for another situation. So, what is the rest of this equation about? Well, let's consider the top bit first, the big N. What this is, it's the total number of um, individuals for the whole situation, the whole environment, the whole time you're studying or whatever. So that's every single species and each individual within each species. So you add up, let's say woodland, the number of foxes that you spot, the number of badgers, the number of owls, etc. You add them all together and then that gives you this number here, n. And then you just multiply that number by 1 minus your total number. We're going to go through an example um, shortly, but I just want to sort you through the whole equation first. On the bottom, you've got little n. Now, little n, it's the number of individuals for each species. So you're going to need to do a few little calculations for each species. So it would be the number of badgers multiplied by 1 minus that number, and then the number of owls minus multiply by 1 minus that number 
and then the number of foxes multiplied by 1 minus that number. And what this symbol here is, it's the sigma sign, this just means the sum of. So it's multiplying all those together, adding those, sorry, adding those all together to end up with your bottom number. So let's have a look at work. Here we've got a woodland, and the question here, what is the diversity index of this habitat? So we've got one owl, two foxes, eight fish, 34 worms, and five mice. What's going to be the diversity index of it? Okay, so the first thing you're going to do is write up the equation. Even if you're really familiar with this and you find it very straightforward, please always write the equation up just in case you do make a mistake. You will get some credit for it. First thing we're going to deal with is the, the top bit, which is the big n times big n minus 1. The way you're going to do that is add up all the individuals of each species. So it's going to be 5, add 8, add 34, add 1, add 2. And that equals 50. So that would be 50 multiplied by 1 minus 50, which is 49. So that's the top half dealt with. The bottom half, the sum of small n times small n minus 1. Well, the best way to do that is just to break it down, chunk and break it all up. So it's 5 mice times 4, put that in brackets, add that to 8 fish times 1 minus 8, which is 7, and 34 worms times by 33, and 1 owl times by 0, and two foxes times by one. What that is is twenty add fifty six add one thousand and twenty two add zero. Don't forget that. If you multiply anything by zero, it's zero. And add that by two, add two to that. So that gives us a number of. 1,200. So that is our bottom number there. 50 times 49 is 2,450. Divide that by 1,200. And that gives us our answer of 2.04. So just a reminder, there's no units associated with that, there's no scale to apply it to or anything like that. It's just a number. Now if we were to compare this 2.04 to another habitat in this woodland, perhaps not in the pond region or at a different time of year, you'd end up with a different number and you would then be able to say which situation is more diverse compared to the other. This is one thing that students do find quite tricky but find a way of remembering the equation. Make sure you know difference between big N and small N, and then just take your time, break it up, write it all down all the stages, so if you do make a mistake, you'll get credit. The final thing that you need to be aware of is um, how humans can affect species diversity, and the first one here is um, agriculture. Farmers only select pr um, product productive species, they don't want species that aren't going to be um, productive and give them maximum profit. So they only grow and sometimes certain species and certain strains and those with the um, only those alleles that provide that high productivity. So they also reduce nest diversity. However we're just interested in species diversity in this instance. So that means in our field with only wheat in there's going to be much reduced species diversity. They do that by using pesticides to reduce um, any insects that might be growing in there, kill them off, herbicides for other plants and fungicides for funguses. And what they do is they just ensure that we only end up with wheat, in this example, in our field. Result, much reduced species diversity. 
The other example of how humans interfere and reduce species diversity is by deforestation. And as you can imagine in this shot here, this would have been all forest. However, deforestation occurs. What that means is you've now got much um, reduced layers within the habitat. So you've not got the shrubs, you've not got the trees, you've not got the can canopies. Therefore, you've got a lot, a lot fewer habitats available for species to grow in. What that means is different animals can no longer grow, uh, live there. If you've not got the trees there, you've not got all the habitats that they provide there, you've not got all the animals that can live there, so therefore, again, that reduces um, species diversity. Just out of interest, this here is an example of the way in which deforestation occurs. They leave these wildlife corridors available so that as they're chopping all these trees down, and they often do it in chunks like this. What that does is it provides a means and mechanism for mobile animals to escape and get out into the, the woodland that isn't being, or the forest that isn't being um, chopped down.